China has approved what will become the world's largest hydroelectric project, set to transform the energy landscape while raising critical questions about environmental, social, and geopolitical impacts. Deep in Tibet's Yarlung Changpo Canyon, the world's deepest gorge, construction will begin on a dam capable of generating three times more electricity than the Three Gorges Dam, which is already a marvel of engineering. This new mega dam will generate an estimated 60 gigawatts of electricity annually, producing nearly 300 billion kilowatt hours, dwarfing the Three Gorges Dam's 88.2 billion kilowatt hours. The cost of this project exceeds 1 trillion yuan, $137 billion, more than the GDP of some nations. This staggering investment will reshape not only Tibet's landscape, but also Asia's water supply. The dam will be built on the Yarlung Changpo River, which originates in Tibet and flows into India and Bangladesh as the Brahmaputra River. This river's natural gradient, cutting through the world's deepest canyon, with an average depth of 2,268 meters, 7,440 feet, and a maximum depth of 6,009 meters, 19,714 feet, offers unmatched hydropower potential. However, the engineering challenges are immense. Construction teams will face extreme altitudes and seismic activity, managing enormous water pressures and variable flow rates influenced by snowmelt and monsoon rains. The region's geology complicates matters further, with 43 major landslide zones, including the Motuo landslide, containing 25.6 million cubic meters of unstable earth. The dam must endure these hazards while being located in one of the world's most earthquake-prone areas. To tackle these challenges, engineers will drill 12.4-mile, 20-kilometer tunnels through solid mountain rock to redirect up to 2,000 cubic meters of water per second. Sophisticated seismic monitoring systems and water quality controls are being implemented to ensure structural integrity and ecosystem protection. The scale of this project is unprecedented. It will generate more electricity than the entire power grids of some countries and could revolutionize dam construction in extreme environments. The site's dramatic U-turn around Namchabarwa Mountain presents unique hydrodynamic conditions requiring innovative construction methods that push the boundaries of what is possible. China's motivation for this project is twofold. First, the country aims to transition to renewable energy to meet its pledge of carbon neutrality by 2060. Massive hydropower projects like this are crucial for reducing reliance on coal. Second, the project promises significant economic benefits, including job creation and long-term growth. Yet, these impressive achievements come with substantial costs. The environmental impacts are profound. Tibet's high-altitude plateau is one of Earth's most fragile ecosystems. Building such a massive dam could disrupt biodiversity, submerge vegetation, and contribute to greenhouse gas emissions, particularly methane, released when submerged vegetation decomposes. The region's unique species, adapted to high altitudes, will see their habitats altered forever. The human cost is equally concerning. Entire communities face displacement, including ancient Tibetan settlements that have existed for generations. Up to 1.2 million people near various dam sites could be displaced, losing not only their homes, but also centuries-old monasteries and sacred sites integral to Tibetan cultural identity. The sheer weight of water stored in the reservoir increases risks of landslides and earthquakes, an alarming prospect in this seismically active area. The project also raises geopolitical concerns. The Yarlung Changpo River flows downstream into India and Bangladesh as the Brahmaputra, a lifeline for millions who depend on it for agriculture, drinking water, and flood management. Reduced water flow or sudden releases could severely impact these downstream regions. Given ongoing border tensions between China and India, the dam's potential to control water supply adds another layer of complexity to regional relations. Critics argue that this gives China unprecedented leverage over its neighbors, exacerbating geopolitical tensions in South Asia. Local opposition, though suppressed, has emerged. Protests against similar projects, such as the Kamtok Dam, highlight the depth of local concern. Despite government crackdowns, these protests underscore the social costs of such mega-projects. 
Critics also question whether China's environmental protection measures, such as ecological conservation programs, are sufficient given the project's scale and impact. From an economic perspective, the dam will create thousands of jobs and spur technological advancements. Infrastructure developments to support the project will transform the regional economy. However, these benefits must be weighed against the irreversible environmental and social costs. The international community's reaction has been mixed. Environmental groups warn of catastrophic ecological damage, while engineering communities view the project as a technical marvel. Downstream nations express deep concern over water security, fearing the dam's control over a critical resource. As construction begins, several questions remain. How will the dam affect the region's seismic stability? What will be its long-term environmental impact? Can downstream nations secure guarantees about water flow? How will displaced communities preserve their cultural heritage? Proponents argue that this dam represents a monumental step forward for renewable energy, helping China achieve its carbon neutrality goals and reducing reliance on coal. Critics, however, emphasize the environmental risks and social injustices. Tibet's unique ecosystem could face irreversible damage, and Tibetan communities may lose their homes and cultural heritage without adequate compensation or consultation. Ultimately, the Yarlung Changpo Dam represents both opportunity and risk. It is a testament to human ingenuity and ambition, but also a stark reminder of the environmental and social costs of such progress. Can China balance development with sustainability and regional cooperation? Or will this project become an example of progress at too high a cost? The world is watching.